Alright, some of you guys might have seen uh, this license plate flipper sold online. It's a pretty good flipper. It comes with a remote. I really like it. But a lot of you will notice that... See, it's got two sides. A lot of you guys will notice that this is about 13 inches wide. And from here to here is about 13 inches wide. And it just won't fit. So what I had to do is get a fiberglass bumper. And uh, grind out quite a bit. I don't know, that looks about a quarter of an inch or two eighths of an inch on both sides. And before I did that I had to glass the inside because this this fiberglass bumper, I didn't make it. It's super super thin. Let me check this out. I mean it's barely a nickel thick. Uh, even the mounts, I had to reinforce the mounts because they're just way too thin and pretty brittle. I mean look at that way too thin so what I did is I, I glassed in three layers of X mat and even with three layers you can see I went through a little bit right there at the bottom on both sides I know some people that for some for some reason they got it to fit in their car I don't know how I know my 89 formula has a different bumper and actually this actually fits in it because of the license plate area is just a little bit wider I think it's 14 or 13 and a quarter or something like that and this one's exactly 13 inches so once you get it to fit like I did here, then you got room for it to open up. But even then, it can only open up to about right here. So I got to make sure I got enough clearance for it to be able to open. And on top of that, once you get it in there, I still got, you know, maybe a half inch to go up. You got this big gap here, and this is going to stick out like a sore thumb. It's going to look so ugly. Uh, I just don't like it. I want it to be flush. So, that's what I'm talking about. We need to cut out on the inside, just right here, and fit this thing snug inside. I don't care if it hides the top lip of this thing. I'm not worried about that. I don't really care about that. I just want it to be able to open up once it's in there. I think it's going to work just fine. I'm not sure if I'm going to cut this or not. If I cut it, then when I mold it, uh, it's going to show the cut, and then it's no longer going to be an original so I'm still debating if I want to do that I might just mold it the way it is here keep shaving it up a little farther and keep it kind of stock you know because no one's going to notice that I made it a quarter inch wider that's not a big deal but if I start cutting into this you're going to notice it's different and if anybody wants a rear bumper uh, without the flipper you know just a stock one I don't want to mess that up for you guys uh, before I even mold this thing of course uh, I gotta fix it. I gotta put it on my car. It's bowing at the bottom real bad. Uh, show you from this angle. You can see that it it it's not straight. It kind of go, it's got high spots right here. I'm pretty sure that's because it was molded off of the rubber one, and it was only molded once. Usually, when I mold something, I'll mold it once, fix, put it on the car, fix it, and mold it again. But uh, some people don't want to do that. They don't want to spend the time to make two molds. Definitely need to fix that. And that bowing issue. Not so bad on the top side, but most people say, oh, well, it's on the bottom. You're not going to see it, but you will see it. If you get low, if you get low under the car and take pictures in the back, you're going to see a big, a big lumpity lump right there. And I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I don't want a lump, lumpy looking uh, rear bumper. One that looks like it's uh, rubber made but it's actually fiberglass so might as well just fix it I mean I don't get it fix the thing make it fit right and even if I do fix this on my car fit it perfectly to my car doesn't guarantee it's gonna fit the next car so that's just the way it goes I mean that's fiberglass that's that's fitting bumpers and doors and stuff it's just the name of the game everybody's gonna have to fit it their own selves but the good thing is fiberglass can be you know, filled with filler and cut and modified. You can't do it to the rubber noses or rubber bumpers, rear bumpers or front bumpers. What I was going to do, like I said, was just going to cut real high, but that's going to that's going to change the look of the bumper, and I really don't want that. So I think I'm just going to cut out here and just make it fit inside this hole here. All right, got this thing as high up as I can get it. And I still got that gap down there. It's only about, I don't know, half an inch. 
but it's enough to annoy me. Let's see. Yep, exactly a half inch. So that means we've got to cut in here. We want it flush. And I definitely want mine flush. What I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to have to cut out here this notch. Anyway, there's a hole already there for the light for the license plate. All you have to do is cut out from here to there and down and across. On this side, same thing. And that thing will shove right in there. Go right inside there until you get it flush to about right there. Then having that thing sticking down. See that? Nice and flush. So that's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm not going to cut into the to uh, into this. I decided not to because I know a lot of you guys are meticulous and you guys are going to say, "Oh, the bumper's been modified too much. It's not original looking," and I don't want that. So I'm going to leave this alone. All we got to do is make a cut under here, and the license plate flipper will fit right inside there. So the only mods I had to do is make it wider. And now, now that it's wider, I might have to go a little bit, a little farther, and then put some uh, filler in there and a little bit of glass on the other side because I did run through the three layers of glass that I added. Okay, uh, I want to talk again about this bumper. I didn't make it. Uh, I got it. It was a trade deal from somebody. I'm not going to say who. Look at this. I'm not joking, guys. It's like. It's like a nickel, maybe even a dime. I cut this out of my uh, headliner today for a customer. And you can see it's not super thick. I only did about one layer of two ounce and one cloth mat. You can actually see the cloth on one side. The cloth is uh, the last layer I put so it's all smooth. It doesn't cut you. And I'll compare it to this and look at that. My headliner is thicker than the rear bumper. That's ridiculous. If I paid, I don't know, what is it, 600 bucks plus shipping or whatever it is, that's just ridiculous. Come on. It doesn't even look like it's 2 ounce matte. It looks like it's maybe 1 ounce matte. I don't know. It, it, it's super thin. I, whatever it is, he should have doubled it up and put a little bit more because this is not acceptable, guys. This is just, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Way too thin. I mean, super light as a feather. The first person that taps your car from behind this thing's going to be falling off from the thin mounts at least he did put a little bit more on the, the mount it looks like he put one layer more you could actually see the line where it is but even then that's still not thick enough that's that's ridiculous that's just it's just ridiculous guys i mean i feel bad for anyone that bought this bumper i mean there's a headliner again that's about the thickness that's the thickness of the mount so, you'd be lucky if that's two layers of glass there. And, you know, come on. Get some X-Mat. It's not that expensive. Throw some X-Mat in there. That's what I did. That will never break on you. But, yeah, this, this thing is just ridiculously thin. I'm just, like, amazed at how thin it is for a rear bumper. I mean, I know you're trying to make it thin, maybe like the rubber one, but the rubber ones are rubber. They don't need to be thick because it's rubber. Fiberglass doesn't have to be thick either, but for a bumper, a rear bumper, you would at least want two, three layers of glass. And this thing looks like it's, luckily if it's two, it doesn't even look two. It looks like one layer of glass with two layers on the side. Ah, oh, man. It might be two, three layers, but if it is, it's like one, one ounce mat the real thin mat the cheapy mat that you can get like at home depot and those little kits i don't know this is just blows my mind so anyways that's that's all i had to say pretty disappointed in the quality of this thing it, it seems like a bias review because i'm jacob from knight rider shop and i sell stuff too but in all honesty i'm an honest guy i don't lie i, I tell the truth and the truth is, your fiberglass needs an extra layer or two for it to be uh, up there with the higher quality stuff. And that's my opinion. And another thing is, this thing's wavy as heck. 
Ooh, it's like a roller coaster at the bottom. I don't like that. So, got to put it on the car and fix it. Anyways, that's my review for the rear bumper. Anyways, I didn't care if it was thin or thick because it's just going to be a plug. I was going to use my own rubber bumper that I have outside actually to mold, but this just cuts it short. I don't have to make uh, a quick mold and then do the modified modification I just did and then make another mold. So now I only have to do one mold. So thanks a lot for, to the person who traded me uh, some stuff for this and I appreciate it. And it'll work even though it's super thin and it's like it's paper thin really but it doesn't matter I'm gonna mold it and when I when I sell them I'll do at least uh, <laughs> a lot better job of uh, glassing it all right another video of it in there that's as far as I can get it up uh, a tiny little gap maybe a little bit farther can go but even if I do, it's still going to be hanging down here. And I know for a lot of you guys, that ain't a big deal to hang to have that hanging down. But for me, it's just like, the fact that I know it's hanging down, it bothers me. <laughs> so, again, easily just cut it out. Cut a line out right here and slide it right up under there. This is one of the cheaper flippers. They go for 200 to 250. There's one that's like 500 bucks, and it's like it's worse than this one as far as functionality. And uh, I don't think anybody wants to pay that much for a license plate flipper. And I don't even think that one fits in the rear bumper as well. It's the same width. So, anyways, guys, uh, that's a video of it. That's how it looks. It's kind of sticking out, as you can see. So, would need to be installed correctly, which is cut out right here. Let it slide up under there. And you'll need a little space for it to open and close. So, you might need to even cut it almost all the way where this line is all the way across. So, literally, you would just take your, your cutoff tool and just cut all the way here and all the way there and then down on the edge down on the edge and right here at the bottom that thing should slide right up under there and be able to open just fine alright did a real quick sand job on this and yeah, there was a low spot here a low spot there there was some uh, cracking here and it was like orange spot putty that stuff is garbage um, I sanded it all out and put some filler there as well. And there was a few other places that had like that, that toothpaste uh, spot putty crap, which is garbage. And it takes forever to dry as well. Yeah, you might want to get some real glazing putty. Here's a good brand, Evercoat polyester glazing putty. There we go, spot putty. This stuff really sucks. Yeah, ideal for last minute repairs and imperfections yeah sure that's crap guys don't use that stuff unless you want to be repeating your body work over and over anyways uh, oh, real big low spot there but I'm pretty sure the low spots are just because it's a rubber bumper and you know these things flex so but again good thing about fiberglass is you can fix all that